uh, for many young people, there could never be a better time to be develop the future together than now. Uh, in the field of the internet, young people are the most users. Even in a developing country like mine, there are many challenges, where there are many challenges such as lack of internet infrastructure, low <coughs> bandwidth, lack of money. There are still so many people accessing, so many young people accessing the internet on their mobile phones. In fact, I can share experiences here of young people who, in order to overcome the problem of low bandwidth, open web pages without loading images. I can even go further to tell you about uh, uses and successes of the mobile money transfer in Africa, which is a technology that has been developed by young people. Excuse me. <clears throat> the interesting thing about our internet experience in developing countries is that the youth seem to be leading the way and everybody else is following. In a creative industry, for example, where I work, <coughs> most research on script writing, advertising and news content is now being done on social networking platforms. And everybody else, politicians, the media, marketing, they're all engaging the youth <coughs> online. They're following us. Even the governments are trying to catch up. Even politicians are opening web pages in preparation for general elections and campaigns. Seeing as young people are the are rightful stakeholders in this internet uh, environment, is it enough to leave them as users, producers of information and applications on the internet? Is it enough to discuss youth and internet governance solely on the issues of safety of young people on the net or concerning control of uh, youth activism on the internet? Um, I have an example where uh, on many... Um, social networking sites uh, for the last few days, uh, Kenyans have been discussing a proposal. Um, I don't know whether this is true or not, where uh, it's being proposed by employers that uh, Facebook should be blocked at um, workplaces. Is it enough to limit um, young people's experiences on the net to this? Perhaps it's time we developed a more holistic future in the IG environment by incorporating youth in all uh, processes. Um, additionally, there are many outstanding issues that if addressed would uh, be a start in developing this future together. Uh, coming from a developing country, I'd say that the issue of access has to be given foremost focus if we are really to develop together. Developing countries are already lagging behind in many fields and the youth cannot afford to be left behind as far as internet is concerned. If we are to be develop the future together, we need to reconsider, for instance, the skewed revenue sharing arrangements that exist for internet traffic between, for example, East Africa and the Western world. How can we develop together if youths in Kenya have to pay so much to access websites hosted abroad, yet we are in a global village? When will these youths catch up with the fast-paced world that the rest of the youth in the world are enjoying? For young people from developing countries to participate in internet governance, we have to start from building an internet culture in these areas. In light of this, I appreciate that the next IGF will be held in a developing country, to be more precise, Kenya, and I hope this will be a challenge to all the East African governments to step uh, to talk, um, to increase their efforts at increasing access to young people in schools. In the future we are developing together, <coughs> the laws and the processes of developing laws have to take into account the views and experiences of young people. This IGF, if anything, has gone to show that young people have interesting and important views, even if they express them in a different way. If the, in, if the future demands that, for example, we govern social networking, we can start by acknowledging the important role that th these networks play in the life of youths, their role in education, their role in expression, and then we can balance their role with the, their usefulness, with the need to govern them. If we are talking about privacy, we have to remember that as youth, in this period that we are called youth, we have said many things that maybe in future we'd like to forget. The, 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 the disadvantage is that in our case, we have said these things and they are now put permanently on the net and the net never forgets. From our view, it is important that the internet community discusses the right to be forgotten. And we think that, and we can think of very many examples where youth input is required. 
and should be considered. Copyright law on the internet is an example. Net neutrality is another. Cloud computing is another. Critical management of internet resources is another. Who knows, maybe when the new GTLDs come up, we will want to have a dot youth and to manage it. So for purposeful youth uh, participation, there needs to be continued capacity building. I would like to appreciate the efforts uh, being uh, put by the internet community, by organizations such as ISOC and uh, Diplo, that are taking this role of capacity building uh, very seriously. I invite the same level of commitment from other stakeholders, the governments, the regional IGFs, businesses, and even fellow youth to contribute to this capacity building in this IG area. And I call upon everybody from whatever um, area they come from to mainstream youth in internet governance so that in future we can have uh, more workshops such as this where the youth are in the main stage. In my view, this is the future that we can develop together. Thank you.